Magandang magandang gabi everyone and welcome to TFV Live, your guide to animal health episode 3. I am John Santos and again I will be your host this evening. Now a month ago we had an episode about biosecurity and how it can help prevent the risk of diseases, specifically the African Swine Fever or ASF. Alam namin na marami din ang ating mga, sa ating mga kababayan na nag-aalaga ng mga manok. At ibon, syempre. So tonight, it's all about protecting poultry farms from avian influenza o mas kilala sa tawag na bird flu. Tama kayo dyan. Now, last March 2022, the Philippines reported an outbreak of avian influenza among poultry farms and as it remains to increase, patuloy din itong nagiging banta sa kalusugan ng ating mga alagang hayo, pati na din syempre, human health. Kaya naman sa event na ito, malalaman natin ang tamang paraan upang maiwasan or matigil ang pagkalat ng avian influenza or bird flu. Which is why, as you can see on your screens, ang ating official hashtag sa mga magko-comments, magbibigay ng mga tanong nila, mag- mag-a-hi. Ayan, gamitin po natin ating mga official hashtags like hashtag TFV Live at hashtag or hashtag TFV Bird Flu. Ayan, so inulit natin ano yung mga mga nag mga nagigreet mga nagsasabi ng mga locations nila ayan uh, gamitin po natin yung ating official hashtag no para every time you post your comments sa ating uh, comment section diyan sa baba dito sa baba ayan gamitin po ninyo ang ating official hashtags again these are uh, the following uh, hashtag #tfv live at hashtag #tfv bird flu all right now before we start allow me of course to acknowledge the team that made this event possible Ang mga masisipag na the Filipino vet, the Philippines animal industry's most trusted information portal on products, services, and learning resu- or learning resources to help, of course, all guardians give care to all farm and pet animals. And of course, this event is also made possible by APT Health, Wishum Nutrition, and Beyond. At syempre, andyan din ang Zamira Life Sciences. Now, just a few reminders before we start. Prior to this evening, eh, tayo po ay nagparapol ulit ng ating TFB team. Ngayong gabi, malalaman ninyo kung kasali ba kayo sa sampung nanalo sa ginanap na e-draw ng TFV. Ang mga nanalo ay makakatanggap ng gift pack mula sa TFV at syempre sa ating mga sponsors, kaya abangan po nating lahat yan. Sa mga nanonood ngayon sa, na hindi naman nakasali sa ating pre-event contest, Wag ho kayong magalala dahil may chance pa din kayong manalo ng TFV gift packs. Simpleng-simple lang ang gagawin ninyo. Mag-post ng inyong tanong sa ating comment section at wag kalilimutan uh, isabay ang ating mga official hashtags katulad ng hashtag TFV Live and of course hashtag TFV Bird Flu. Ang mga tanong na mapipili ang siyang mananalo ng gift packs again mula sa TFV at ating mga sponsors. Okay, alam ko, excited na kayo na mamit ang ating uh, guest speaker for today. Excited na ba kayo? Ko excited ka, can you please show me a thumbs up? Thumbs up naman kayo dyan sa comment section natin. Sige nga, kung excited na kayo na mamit at uh, matuto sa ating guest speaker ngayong gabi. Ito na, ipapakilala na natin siya. May mga nakikita na tayo nagbibigay ng kanila mga thumbs up ngayon sa ating comment section. Ayan, kagaya ni Isa Manalo. Ito na. Ang ating guest speaker for today is a graduate of Doctor of Veterinary Medicine at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. He worked in the area of sales all over the Philippines with multinational companies katulad ng Elanco, Boringer, Intervet, and sharing plow lang naman. <laughs> and of course, focused on uh, technical services with Fort Dodge as the poultry technical and marketing manager. Acquired by Pfizer as the senior field veterinarian for poultry and was part of the global poultry team of Zoetis or Zoetis. Started being a poultry consultant with the chicken doctors last 2015 and is now handling breeder, broiler, and layer accounts in South Luzon. He is currently the president of the chicken doctors. Acts as a third-party veterinarian for animal health companies, and in 2018, he was admitted as a diplomat or diplomat to the Philippine College of Poultry Practitioners. Excited, na ba kayo? 
So ito na, hindi na natin patatagalin. Let us all welcome Dr. Oji Laranas. Filipino Vet Live for giving me this opportunity to talk about protecting poultry farms from avian influenza. So hi, I'm Dr. Oji Laranas of the Chicken Doctors. And today I'll be talking about a very important topic. Uh, currently, the poultry industry is facing this biggest challenge with bird flu right now. We have an ongoing outbreak. It started last February and the disease is still here. So uh, the danger of having your farms being affected by this disease is still there. So this is what we're going to tackle in this presentation. So. Uh, a brief background lang. Again, I'm Dr. Oji Laranas of the Chicken Doctors. We are a group of consultants, group of veterinarians working all over the country. And we provide uh, quality, objective, and professional technical services nationwide. So uh, currently, I'm their president. We are a group of six practitioners handling around 8 million layers and 1 million broilers uh, in a given month. And what I'm going to share to you is most of our experiences and most of our advice we give to our clients in protecting their farms against bird flu. Now, for us to be able to protect our farms, first we must know the enemy. Know what bird flu is, understand how it moves, how it affects your farm, so that you'll be able to come up with a customized, effective way on protecting your farm against disease. Okay? Bird flu is a zoonotic disease caused by influenza A or thumixovirus. Zoonotic means it is a disease that can be transferred from the chickens to humans. So, pwede tayong mahawaan ng sakit na to. It affects all poultry, waterfowls like your etics, goose, uh, ducks, your pet birds, and migratory birds. It is a very contagious disease and... It has a very short incubation period, kaya ang bilis na pong manghawa. It can make a bird sick in just a few hours or days upon exposure. And if left unchecked, in two weeks, it can wipe out or it can affect the whole farm. So that's how dangerous bird flu is and how devastating it is to the industry. Now, how is bird flu transmitted? Bird flu is basically transmitted bird to bird, especially with any organic material that contains the virus. When usually the uh, materials na medyo rich sa virus are your, your epot, your feces, and their respiratory secretions. So basically what happens is if a healthy bird is uh, mingles with a sick bird, its secretions or if it steps on the apot, it eats the apot or the, the chicken dung, uh, that's how it transmits and makes the bird infected. Now, usually uh, the infection we have right now came from wild migratory birds because uh, uh, bird flu is happening all around the world right now. This is not a disease happening in the Philippines land. It started in Europe in the US and because of the migratory birds traveling all around these countries, these migratory birds were the ones who brought the virus to us. Studies have shown that the virus affecting US and Europe, the Eurasian H5N1, is the same H5N1 that is affecting Philippines right now. So what happens is when migratory birds arrive, and they commingle with our own wild birds, the wild birds gets infected. Now, because the wild birds can fly around, they're not that stressed as compared to livestock, sometimes these birds survive and do not get sick, or uh, get sick but they do not die of the disease. Now, as you see in this picture in this slide, these wild birds can approach your farms and they may be the ones that will carry the virus inside your farm or get your local chickens be in contact with the wild virus. Sila po ang nagiging vector po. So here in the Philippines, you, see, you, would see, you would see these birds hanging around in your farms. And this is one of the pictures I saw in one of my farms that this egret 
is inside my farm already. And if ever this egret come mingled with a migratory bird with bird flu, these chickens are already in danger of getting the disease. So, uh, na lang, this farm is in Batangas. We are far from the uh, swamp area where bird flu uh, was first reported. It was first reported in the Candaba swamp. So, um, medyo negative pa po to mga farms na to, but the danger of transmission from wild bird to your livestock, as you would see, is there. Now, bird flu as a virus is actually a very susceptible virus to disinfectants. So you can easily control it as long as you follow good biosecurity, good cleaning and disinfection measures. You can use all these disinfectants, sodium hypochlorite, ethanol, quaternary ammonium compounds, glutaraldehyde, phenols, acids, even povidone iodine. As long as they are in contact with the virus, they can inactivate or kill the bird flu virus. So if your farm regularly disinfects, you lessen the risk of having bird flu inside your farm. Now, bird flu also uh, cannot survive in very hot uh, conditions. That's why when you cook bird meat or eggs, with the right temperature, you are inactivating the virus. And also, extreme pH, be it very basic, very acidic, the bird flu virus does not survive. So this is different from uh, African swine fever, where an African swine fever virus can survive even when cooked. But for bird flu virus, if you cook your uh, chicken meat well or eggs well, you don't get infected. So, as I've said, it's a very fast and very contagious virus. Uh, the, oh, the bird needs only to be exposed to this virus and in a few hours or days, they get sick and then they will immediately uh, be contagious to other birds. And in fact, based on our experience, in a span of two weeks, the flocks can be infected already. So the Department of Agriculture uh, released this graphic showing signs of bird flu. They say that a uh, bird that is infected with bird flu would look like this. May pamamaga ng palong, pamamaga ng binte, pananamlay at walang ganang kumain, hindi normal na pag dumi, pagbabagal, pangingitlog. But I have to warn you, these are not telltale or patognomonic signs of bird flu. Birds that get sick with bird flu will show these signs, but these signs also appear on other diseases. So usually it's very hard to distinguish, but before your birds immediately die from the disease, the usual sign of trouble would, again, they won't eat that much, they appear weak and depressed, then eventually you get your spikes in mortalities. So with bird flu, once you get your spikes in mortalities, that's already a very bad sign that your farm is infected and it's already too late. That's why in terms of the control of bird flu, what you need to do is really uh, try to prevent it from getting inside your farm. So here are some pictures of what bird flu looks like. These are pictures taken by our colleagues last 2017 the bird flu outbreak in Pampanga, where it happened in layers. So, as you see, there are the respiratory signs, parang sinisipon. You've got the discoloration of the comb, nang nangingitim. Then you get a lot of mortalities. Pag ang bird flu po ay nandyan na, based on my experience with some of farm owners consulting with me, uh, in a 10,000 building, a building with 10,000 birds, they can have around 300, 500 to 1,000 birds dead per day once you get hit by bird flu. So in the field cases, when you open up the birds, you would get a lot of these signs. Now, these signs usually appear because your birds have very high fever. So, you know, yung kita dito sa legs, meron kang pitikil hemorrhages pag dudugo. Sa trachea, even nga sa fat pads ng manok, meron na pa rin mga uh, pitikil hemorrhages or puntik-puntik ng dugo, which is an indication that the bird had high fever 
before dying of bird flu. You open up this uh, other organs, dito yung lungs, yung uh, proventriculus, akala mo yung castle disease, yun pala, a eh, bird flu na pala. At yun nga, itong other parts sa heart, yung puntik-puntik ng dugo sa other parts of the body ng manok, yun ay parang isang indication na yun nga, nagka-bird flu talaga yung flap. So, how do you know if it's really bird flu? You cannot tell it it's bird flu just by looking at the signs. So, you need a confirmatory test, parang COVID lang. You can use a screening test, you can use PCR. But here in the Philippines, what we do, a screening test with ELISA or a rapid test, and then we confirm it with PCR. Okay? Now, bird flu, because it's caused by a virus, there's no specific treatment for bird flu. So, usually, uh, ang talagang ginagawa pag ang farm ay tinamaan ng bird flu ay dinidepopulate or pinapatay po lahat ng manok na may bird flu para wala na pong mahawaan. So, usually, this is, uh, lalo na pag nahuli at na-identify ng laboratory, that you have an H5 or an H7 type of bird flu virus, then it needs to be stamped out. Kasi highly pathogenic bird flu po yun. So this is the control that's done by bird flu. They euthanize or kill all the birds affected in the farm para po wala nang mahawaan ng bird flu. As you can see in this picture, naka-hazmat suits ang mga taong gumagawa nito. Because bird flu is contagious to humans. All right, saktong sakto ang title, of course, ng presentation ni Doc Oji na understanding bird flu. Dahil siguro ako mas naintindihan natin lahat kung ano nga ba ang avian influenza or bird flu. Ito pala isang zoonotic disease caused by influenza na nakakahawa sa iba't ibang klase ng ibon or poultry. So, Doc Oji, meron lang po akong question. Paano ba natin may iwasan? Ang, uh, and I, I think most of uh, mga viewers natin are also asking the same question. Paano ba natin may iwasan ang uh, pagkalat ng bird flu? Doc Oji? To prevent this, what we need to do is to protect our farm. That's why you all always hear the word biosecurity. Biosecurity, pag hinati mo yung words, bio means life, security means to protect. It means you protect the life inside your farm. That's basically biosecurity. Now, in this picture, this is one of my graphics. Bird flu as a disease will not immediately hit your farm. Usually, it hits a small part of your farm pag na-expose na at hindi nabantayan. Saka siya kumakalat. So ang ginagawa po natin with biosecurity, gusto natin, ang biosecurity ay kung ano mang kumakalat na virus, napapatay siya. Tapos itong vaccination ay para maprotektahan ang ibon sa ibang mga sakit na pwede magpahina ng kanilang immune system para tamaan sila ng bird flu. Tapos yung antibiotics or medication naman ay ginagamit naman natin para i-treat ang mga secondary bacterial infections na dala nito. But based on my experience po, if bird flu is already there, no amount of vaccination or medication can uh, stop the outbreak. It really spreads like wildfire. But good biosecurity has proven to help these farms from getting affected by bird flu. Okay? So, because we've learned that bird flu comes from contact with an infected animal, infected bird, dapat importante po na lahat ng mga ibon, backyard ba na ibon, tinale, they should not be in contact with your chickens or with your livestock because you don't know where these birds were exposed. Kaya pag may alaga kayong ibang ibon sa farm, actually hindi namin ina-advise yun. Kasi ang sakit ng nandun sa labas ay pwedeng madala sa mga farm animals yung na nasa loob. 
ng cages or nasa loob ng mga enclosures nyo. So, there should be no contact with this. And yun nga, ang isa sa mga naging experience ng ibang farms is pag nag-day off ang kanilang mga boy, ay usually na-involve sila sa sabong or may alaga silang mga backyard birds sa mga bahay nila. Uh, in times of bird flu, that's not a very good idea. Mas maganda po na if they have that, eh, huwag sila ma-expose muna sa livestock nyo na uh, ibon or iwasan na lang po muna sana. So, syempre, dahil nga ang kalat ng bird flu would come from any animal, person, vehicle, carrying the feces or secretions of an infected animal, it would be very good that you have very strong farm barriers. So, syempre, kung mas malayo ang farm mo sa ibang farm, mas less po yung hawa nyo. Pero kung may magkalapit kayo na farm, maganda po meron kayong delineation ng mga fence, mga wire, para hindi agad-agad makakapasok kung sino man sa inyong farm. Keep grass and other vegetation controlled. Bakit? Kasi pwedeng dyan po duma po ang migratory birds, dyan po pwedeng duma ng daga, pwedeng anyone na makaapak ng ipot na may bird flu ay pwedeng siya ang magdala po ng bird flu sa loob ng bibig nyo. So, make sure na um, malayo ang inyong mga manok sa posibleng exposure sa kahit anong bagay sa sakyan, tao, o manok na magdadala ng bird flu sa farm. Siyempre, yung flock housing. Ang bahay ng manok, pang manok lang dapat. So, ibig sabihin, make sure na safe siya. Kung anong chinelas, boots, or sapatos mo sa labas, iba ang chinelas, sapatos, at boots mo sa loob. Dapat po ang loob ng farm ay pwede niyong madisinfect. So, minsan ang ginagawa po namin ay nagpapaulan ng disinfectant or minsan nagpapainom kami ng mga agents na may antiviral claim. So, marami na pong available na ganyan sa merkado ngayon. Siyempre, dahil wild birds ang inyong problema, as much as possible, if you can bird, flu, bird proof your buildings para walang ibo na makapasok, mas maganda po. Ang feeds po, Ang ayaw natin sa feeds kasi pag makalat ang feeds sa loob ng farm, doon mo makikita nag a siya ng maya, nag a siya ng ibang ibon sa loob ng farm. So, posibleng yung mga maya o yung mga egrets na pumapasok sa farm ay pwedeng magdala po ng bird flu sa uh, uh, inyong manok na naka-cage, doon sila nahawa. Kaya mas maganda, malinis po lagi ang inyong feeding areas. And uh, because your feeds can also be a, be a rich medium for the bird flu virus, lalo na pag naiiputan yan ng wild birds, make sure that you use clean raw materials for the feed or buy fresh feed lagi para uh, you're sure that the uh, feeds are not infected with any bird flu viral material. And with bird flu kasi, like what we're doing now, the more that people understand how this disease is transferred po, mas maganda at mas naintindihan at mas mas sumusunod ang mga tao sa mga patakaran kasi naintindihan nila ang sakit. Make sure you educate everybody. That's why what, what we're doing in Batangas, the big farms are teaching the small farms by security. Why? Because the small farms can also affect the big farms if they get hit. So, for bird flu, what the chicken doctors recommend? Usually, again, activate your disinfection. Vehicle spray, hugas ng gulong, tire bath, disinfection shoot, or foot, at umapak sa foot bath. Kasi anything, again, na may dala ng ipot or whatever organic material na pwedeng linisin, kailangan nating linisin kasi ito yung posibleng magdala ng bird flu virus sa loob ng farm. Ang mga tao mo, ay dapat malinis po. Bago sila lumapit sa mga manok nyo or sa mga alaga nyo, make sure that person follows strict personal hygiene. So that uh, naliligo po siya, nagsashampoo, nagtututbrush. Kasi nga po, anything na pwede isang magtagong mong bird flu virus, dapat po matanggal natin. Now, para po ma-sure po tayo, kasama sa hygiene, 
Kung anong ginamit na damit sa labas, ay dapat iba ang damit na ginagamit sa farm. So yung damit at sapatos, may pang farm, may damit at sapatos na pang labas. Now, ngayon, sa pagbili ng mga manok or mga pets, migratory birds, game fowls, make sure that you buy these kinds of birds from reputable sources. So usually, karamihan po ng farm ngayon ay uh, may papelis na po na bird flu free. So tested po yan. So, huwag niyo pong hintayin na maraming mamatay na, na ibon sa loob ng farm before kayo mag-report. Pag sa tingin nyo, ngayong araw na ito, biglang tumas ang mortality, you have to call your veterinarian immediately. Kung walang veterinaryo kayo na matatawagan, you have to contact your local government agriculturist or veterinarian po para po makontrol ka agad at hindi na manghawa sa ibang farm. So, again, in-farm biosecurity measures, pag-apak sa food bat, so nakita nyo, katsya lang to na nakaluglob sa disinfectant, pwede na po yan. Gumamit kayo ng sprayer para pagtanggal ng mga uh, ipot sa gulong, sprayhan ng gulong, pwede po yan. Tapos yun nga, yung sinasabi ko, yung disinfectant na pwede nyo yung paulan sa mga manok nyo, lalo na pag na-expose sila sa ibang ibon, nakakatulong rin po yan. So, dito, ang um, pinapakita lang dito po ay uh, ang buong sasakyan hinuhugasan. Example po ito ng foot bath. At itong nasa kanan nyo is a disinfection shoot. So pag dumaan ka dito, magsispray ng disinfectant sa taong papasok to make sure na wala siyang dalang bird flu virus sa loob ng inyong facility. Okay? So with that, ang bird flu is a very contagious disease. Pero pag hindi nyo maintindihan, at marami nang nangyayari sa inyong farm, you have to consult your veterinarian. So with that, kami po ay The Chicken Doctors. You can like and follow us in our Facebook page. At ang advocacy po namin with Bird Flu Around, it's Vets for the Country and Vets for Feed Security. We're here to protect your flocks sa para may manok tayo na makain, may itlog tayo na makain na maayos, at walang taong mahawa sa bird flu. So thank you for listening to my presentation and thank you to the Filipino Vet Life. All right, maraming maraming salamat Doc Oji. It all goes back doon sa topic natin na pinag-usapan natin ng episode 2 which is of course biosecurity. Ayan. Again, maraming maraming salamat. Thank you so much Dr. Oji for that very insightful presentation. Sigurado ako na maraming nakuhang tips ang ating TFV viewers ngayong gabi. Now, before we move to our Q&A segment, we will be having a one-minute break. One minute lang to. So, wala nga alis. Sa mga viewers natin, 65 as of the moment. To listen, of course, to a few words from, of course, the TFV partner brands. Again, I would like to remind all of you to stay, uh, stay tuned uh, until the end of the show for the announcement of our raffle winners and a very special announcement. Nako, last time may special announcement tayo. Ano na naman kaya itong special announcement natin? Care to see, of course, of our friends from TFV team. So don't forget to like, share, and comment your questions with, again, our official hashtags. Hashtag TFV Live and hashtag TFV Bird Flu. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a bit.
All right. So, ayan, we are back once again. I've seen you less than a minute. One minute. Okay. Welcome back sa ating TFV Live episode 3. Nakatatlong episodes na po tayo. And uh, for today's episode, ang topic natin is, of course, uh, po, uh, protecting poultry farms from avian influenza. Now, before we start, allow me to acknowledge TFV's partner brands. Anjan ang PPD Patient App. It is a telehealth mobile platform that allows you to, one, find and connect to a doctor, receive medical documents, chat with your doctor and your dependents, and buy your medicines. Download it now. Available na po yan sa Google Play at sa App Store. With a wide variety of animal health products, PVET is the biggest online database of uh, veterinary products and services in the Philippines. Visit their website at thefilipinovet.com and download the PVET app on Google Play or the App Store. To download the PVET app, just click on the link you see now on the comment section. Ayan, ilalagay natin yan sa comment section natin. Makikita niyo po yan dyan sa baba. I-click niyo lang po yung link na yan. So you can, uh, of course, uh, 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 or you can also scan Ayan, para mas madali yung QR code natin that you are now seeing on your screen. Now, bago natin simulan ang Q&A, the TFV team has another very exciting announcement tonight. Kaya to, every episode may pasabog. Ayan, the right word, pasabog ang TFV team. Okay, eto na. Sa lahat na nag-register, kayo po ay makakatanggap ng... Bagong Basic Guide to Avian Influenza Protection ebook. Talaga naman. Ipapadala ang ebook na sa email na inyong inilagay sa registration forms po ninyo. Sa mga hindi nakapag-register, naku, huwag ho kayo mag-alala dahil pwedeng-pwede pa rin kayong humabol. Napakasimple lang ng gagawin ninyo. Iscan lang ang QR code ayan, na nakikita ninyo dito sa ating screen. Ayan. Now, Let's talk more about this ebook. Ito na. Here's a quick glimpse of the new ebook. Let's all watch this video. Nako talaga naman nakaka-excite uh, itong bagong ebook na ilalabas ng TFV no at alam ko na madami kayong malalaman dito sa ebook na ito pero mas excited at excited ako dito sa susunod na part ng ating uh, programa because right now we will proceed with of course our Q&A portion now, we've collected several questions already that uh, Doc Oji will answer uh, Doc Oji please join me now on screen hi Doc Oji how are you Good evening <clears throat> Medyo lumapit ako ng konti. Medyo malayo pala ako. <laughs> Alright. Ayan, Doc OG. So, eto na. May, may mga ibabato lang tayo ng mga questions. ano And then, we will be flashing those questions also on screen. Now, para doon sa mga gusto pang humabol, I know a lot of you has questions para kay Doc OG. Pwede nyo pa rin i-post yan sa comment section natin dito sa baba. And again, do not forget to use yung ating mga official hashtags. That's hashtag TFB Live at hashtag TFB Bird flu. Doc Oji, ayan, ako maraming salamat doon sa mga uh, informations that you shared a while ago. Ano? Uh, ito, if mga comments or mga questions natin, ire-ready na natin to. Okay, are we set now for our first question? Can we please flash it now on screen? Okay, this is coming from Gian Michael de Polonia. Hello po, ask ko lang po, ano po ba ang H3N3 strain ng avian flu Na unang human case, uy, this is a good question, sir, no? yeah. na naitala po sa China. Ibig din po bang sabihin nito na ang bird flu ngayon ay nag-mutate? No. Maraming maraming salamat po. Stay safe. Again, this is coming from Gian. Doc? Yeah. Well, the H, ang bird flu po ay may H and N component. Okay? 
At yung H and M component ay marami po siyang versions. Parang hanggang H12 yan eh. So, okay. kanya-kanyang halo, kanya-kanyang virus yan, kanya-kanyang bird flu virus yan. Uh, not necessarily sinasabi kong nag-mutate, pero it's a different strain na nahuli. Pwede pong ganun po ang nangyari. So, dito sa Philippines at sa OIE, pag nakahuli ka ng H5 at H7, yun ay highly pathogenic AI. Yung H3 and 8 na nahuli sa China, uh, if I remember that case ang tinamaan dyan ay isang bata, um, yes, bird flu, any HN component, actually pwede siyang maghawa sa tao. Okay. Oo. Pero yung parang COVID rin. Kung marami kang comor- comorbidities, DDT. mas madali kang mahawa sa bird flu. Pero kung mas mataas ang resistensya mo at wala ka namang contact sa birds, hindi ka mahahawa. Pero mutation, uh, t- pinag-aaralan pa yan ngayon, pero yung pag-usbong ng mga bagong strain, nangyayari na po. Kasi ang alam ko, ang unang tumama sa Pilipinas was H5N6 noong 2017. Ah, ngayon, H5N1 na tayo ngayong 2022. So nagbabago-bago rin po, depende sa H&N component na combination po. Dr. Oji, maraming maraming salamat for answering that question. I guess in line with that question, earlier you mentioned, uh, na, na mentioned in you, sir, yung mga signs of uh, bird flu or yung mga symptoms of bird flu. I just wanna connect lang dun sa question na binato sa atin ni Gian. Paano natin, sir, malalaman kung yung person, like me, for example, ano po yung, meron bang mga symptoms? Or paano kung malalaman that I already have yung na, nahawa na sa bird flu? It's like flu. Okay. So you get flu-like symptoms. Pero if you review your history, saan mo nakuha? Are you, were you in contact with uh, an infected bird? Kung mayroon kang history ng ganon, pagdududahan kita nagka-bird flu ka. Pero on a, on a city setting, for example, in Metro Manila, bigla kang nilagnat, ang dami mong pwede. Pwedeng COVID yan. Pwede. Yeah. Yeah. Dengue. So, mm-hmm. uh, depende sa clinical history pa rin po. Ang bird flu... Uh, nakikita ko rin kasi sa comments, sagutin ko na rin dyan, ha? Um, ang bird flu po, mga hawa siya sa tao. When you come in contact with high virus uh, material coming from an infected bird. Okay. Kaya usually, ang napapansin namin globally, ang mga tinatamaan po, yung kung backyard, ang farm na tinamaan, makikita mo yung mga bata or matanda na nakikipaglaro talaga sa ibon. Hinahawakan, yeah. nakikalikan. Sa iba namang farms na nakikita namin na tumama ang bird flu, nakikita mo, uh, for example, in China, dalawang tao nag-aalaga sa 50,000, 100,000 na ibon. Pag pumasok sila sa building, langhap nila lahat ng sinisinga at inuubo ng ibon. Kaya sila nahahawa. So nice. kung wala kang contact sa infected na livestock or birds or uh, any infected wild bird, uh, you're safe from bird flu actually. All right, maraming maraming salamat, Doc, uh, for answering that question. We now proceed with our second question. Flash na natin on screen. And this is coming from Tony Lu. Nai-include po ba sa plano ng gobyerno, specifically sa DRRM or Disaster Risk Reduction Management, ang hazard sa ating mga alagang hayo, particularly sa bird flu or bird and swine flu, Doc? Honestly, for bird flu, meron tayong avian influenza protection protocol. Okay. Kaya lang, hindi ko sure kung pasok siya sa disaster na management po. And I think with what's happening right now with the current outbreak, we are trying to ask rin kasi we'll be needing funds eh, mm-hmm. for containment. Baka kailangan na natin ikuan sa disaster risk management na budget. Po. Right, Pero asa po, parang hindi pa siya pasok. So far, yes. Hopefully, hopefully soon. Maraming maraming salamat, Doc Oji, for answering that question. Let's now proceed with our third question. Okay, dalawang questions na. Sige, basahin natin. This is both coming from Ray Ann. May alaga po akong white leghorn at uh, anim na taong gulang na siya. Nag-iisa lang po siya at may posibilidad po ba na magkaroon din siya ng sakit tulad ng bird flu? And the follow-up question to that, paano po separate ang isang manok na may sakit para maiwasan ang pagkakahawaan nila? Doc? Okay. 
So kahit isa or isang libo yung manok mo, pag dinala ng tao ang virus sa loob ng farm niya, for example, mami, white leghorn mo na mag-isa, eh nakaapak ka ng ipot sa yeah. isang farm na maraming namamatay na ibon, pwede yeah. ikaw maghawa sa ibon nyo po kahit mag-isa lang siya. Ang problema nga, ang sinasabi ko lang sa bird flu, pag meron nang nagkakasakit, ang hirap niyang ihiwalay nyo kasi pag na-incontact na ang bird-to-bird contact po, mabilis yung hawa. Kaya as much as possible, yun nga, uh, it's very good that the Filipino vet has been uh, focusing on biosecurity kasi ganun lang po talaga ang kailangan natin gawin. Yun lang po, as of now, ang pinaka-effective na way na hindi katamaan. Dapat hindi siya makapasok sa farm, dapat wala ka pong dalang bird flu sa farm niyo po. Huwag kang ma-expose sa ibang farm or ibang ibon na may infection. I guess, Doc, OG, dito po mapasok yung uh, saying na prevention is better than cure. <laughs> uh, mahirap sa bird flu. There is no cure. So prevention oh, talaga dapat. Yeah. Prevention talaga. <laughs> uh, so yun na kailangan nilang maintindihan. Kaya yeah. uh, minsan nababasa ko, Doc, ang stricto ng mga requirements, ang daming kuwan ngayon, restrictions. Ganun po talaga for, for us to protect the provinces producing the chicken and eggs that we eat every day to protect those provinces po. Alright, maraming maraming salamat, Doc Oji. Medyo nalungkot tayo dun sa wala pa talagang cure. But hopefully, we'll be able to find cure soon. Okay. Alright, Doc Oji, eto na. Meron pa tayong mga next questions natin. And this is coming from Webmates Champion. Magandang buhay po. Paano po ba ma-prevent ang mataas na mortality sa panahon ng bird flu? At uh, mapipinsala po ba nito ang mga naka-vaccine na mga CCU at uh, Cockerel? Cockerel? Gaya ng B1, B1, NCD, Lasota Plus, ano ba to? 1B or IB? Coriza, IB. IB. Okay, and then Soriza vaccine. Maraming salamat po. Again, this is coming from Webmates Champion. Dokoji, take it away. So, even if your flock is vaccinated against Newcastle, Coriza, dahil ang bird flu ay ibang viral disease, kaya niya pa rin pong hawaan ang mga bakunadong ibo na yun. Okay? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, pabalik nga doon sa question yung first part, yung vaccination lang kasi ang nakon ko eh. Can so, we flash it again on screen? Uh, yeah. Okay. Flash po natin on screen again, guys. Ayan. Tapos, yun nga, para ma-prevent mo yung mataas na mortality ngayon sa panahon ng bird flu, importante yung kompleto rin yung vaccination program nyo po. Kasi, it's not just bird flu na pwedeng pumatay. Newcastle disease, Lasota can kill a lot, Coriza can kill a lot. Pero, yun nga, you protect your birds from these diseases, then you have very good biosecurity para hindi ka pasukan ng bird flu. Doon mape-prevent mo yung mataas na mortality po. Dok Oji, meron lang akong question. Ano? You mentioned about na nagkakamahawa pa rin yung, uh, yung mga yes. na vaccinate. Ano? So, because but... it's a different vaccine. Eh. For example, okay. nagbakuna ako ng pneumonia. Mm-hmm. Tatamaan pa rin ako ng COVID. Mm, yeah, diba? yeah. Parang ganun siya. You need a specific vaccine for that specific disease. Sadly, here in the Philippines, we still do not use bird flu vaccines. Okay. Kasi nga, dahil papalit-palit ang bird flu vaccine, hindi rin siya nagko-cross-protect. So, pwede tayo nagbakuna tayo ng H5N1, eh, ang H5N6 pala meron ikaw, so wala yeah, rin yeah. silbe. So, right now, prevention lang talaga sa bird flu po. Alright, maraming maraming salamat, Doc Oji, for answering that question. I guess we can now proceed with the next question. Can we please flash it now on screen? And this is coming from Romar Zaraspe. Tanong lang po, maaari po bang makahawa sa tao? Parang nasagutan natin ito kanina. Yeah. Ang sakit na bird flu pag nakakain. Oh, ito, this time kasi it's about, you know, pag nakain yeah, mo na consumption. siya. Consumption. Uh-huh. Yeah, na bird flu pag nakakain ng tao na hindi niya alam na may tagline na palang sakit ito. At nakakahawa din po ba ang bird flu sa iba pang mga hayop Gaya ng baboy. Oh, this is a good question. Gaya ng baboy, kambing, at iba pang marami. At iba pa. Maraming salamat daw po. Bird flu siya, kaya pang bird lang po. Okay. <laughs> so, ang tinatamahan <laughs> is yung ducks. Basta ba yung balahibo susceptible mm-hmm. sa bird flu? Okay. Ang baboy, pwede siyang madapuan ng bird flu, pero hindi siya magkakasakit, pero siya magkakalat. Yung daga, ganun rin. Okay? Mm-hmm. Pero hindi sila magkakasakit ng bird flu. Ngayon, Ah, uh, ito gusto ko lang i-ko ng public. Kami veterinarians in the field, 
we make sure there are no infected chicken or infected eggs na nabibenta sa market. The government and the private practitioners make sure of that. Now, if ever may makalusot man na infected na bird flu-laden na uh, produce, again, if you cook it properly, bird flu virus is susceptible to heat. Na-inactivate siya sa heat, na-inactivate siya sa acid at basic. So, pag sinasaw mo sa suka, adi patay rin. So, ang um, kwan lang po, uh, the government right now, make sure, make sure na all poultry products you eat and buy in the market are safe and free from bird flu po. So, but then, to be sure lang, just cook properly uh, your chicken products and your egg products po. Okay, yun lang naman talaga yung doc eh, di ba? Kailangan Tama. lutuin ng maayos. Uh, pero, huwag nilang isipin na may nabibentang mm-hmm. bird flu infected uh, products. Wala po. Kasi, ang minamarket lang ngayon, ang nakalabas lang sa wet market, sa groceries ngayon, ay mga... Uh, products na coming from bird flu free farms. So may papelis right. po yun. All right. Maraming maraming salamat Dr. Ochi. Let us now proceed with the uh, next question. Can we please flash it now on screen? Ayan, this is coming from Christian Arsenio. Hi at TFV. Does all transmitted transmitted through egg consumption, ulitin natin yung sa last part tala. Is the consumption of eggs the reason for avian influenza transmission to humans? When the outbreak was reported daw kasi egg movement was still permitted in our country but what but but was then halted. Uh-uh. Um again, if you eat the eggs as long as it's cooked properly, you don't get bird flu from it. Now, okay. bakit nagkaroon ng restrictions ng movement ng eggs or poultry products from other provinces? It's not because of the eggs per se. It is because the trucks transporting those eggs might have bird flu material sa gulong. Mm-hmm. The egg trays carrying those eggs, kasi carton trays yan, could carry the virus. Yun po ang actual danger nun, hindi yung egg consumption mismo. It's the transport carriers ang concern. That's why the restrictions were made. Okay. So, yun lang. Ang assurance ko lang sa audience natin ngayon, you can continue to eat poultry products. It's safe. Uh, we made sure. The chicken doctors made sure it's safe. The government the government made sure it's safe. Uh, it's just that we're protecting the farms lang na wala pang bird flu right now. Kaya the restrictions are in place. Thank you so much, Doc Oji. Nako, nakaka-assure naman yung sinabi mo. Maraming salamat sa mga chicken wow. doctors. Thank you so much. Let us now proceed with the next question. We're down with our, I think, last three. And this is our second or third to the last. This is coming from John Behasa. John Behasa, question from Facebook. Doc, may regular and free testing po ba? Uy, parang COVID lang din, ano? May regular and free testing po ba para sa mga small-time farm stakeholders for ELISA yes. testing? Yes, uh, actually, uh, believe nga rin ako sa government natin eh. Because bird flu testing is still free. Wow. You just have to coordinate with your local government veterinarian or right now, ang alam ko, nasa Bureau of Animal Industry sa Quezon City yung testing. They do it regularly for uh, game fowl na umiikot. And yun nga lang, because of the current challenge, Ang masasabi ko lang, eh medyo mahaba ang pila ngayon. Maraming nagpapatest. Pero actually, during the time since 2017 hanggang ngayon, the government has had off, has offered screening for free. So yun, you consult with your veterinarian or you consult with your local government veterinarian to avail this. Ayan, that's good news. Maraming maraming salamat, Dr. Oji. And also for sharing, for those who didn't know na meron palang free testing na nagaganap, ano? maraming salamat, Doc. Okay, uh-huh. let's proceed now with our last two questions. Our second to the last question is, this is coming from Adora Dumaging. Ayan, good evening po, Doc. This is my question for people who were hoping to get into backyard chickens. Is this a bad year to start keeping chickens? Nagbabalak po sana ako mag-alaga ng mga manok. Sana po masagot. Thank you so much. And uh, this is coming from Sir Miss Adora. Yes, Doc. 
Uh, ang lalim nun do ka. Okay. Kasi, may... <laughs> kasi sa lang, this year has been a very busy year. And if you want to start with poultry right now, hindi lang kasi bird flu ang challenge mo eh. Uh, the cost of raw materials, feeds mm. right now is also in an all-time high. So if you are new to this and you're looking at backyard farming as a business, medyo challenging siya. Kasi the market, though the demand is there, uh, but the, yun nga, may threat ka ng disease, may threat ka ng cost. As a hobby, yes. I can advise you go with uh, as a hobby. But uh, for a business, business, ang sasabihin ko po sa inyo sa veterinarian, aralin nyo po ng gusto muna. Ang sinasabi ko lagi sa mga poultry racers, if you want to go with the poultry business, always look for your market first. Your market will dictate how big your farm will be. Your market will tell what kind of chickens or operations you'll have. So, pag-aralan nyo pong mabuti. Pero right now, this year, uh, what I can say, it's very challenging. Medyo kulang sa CCU, kulang sa supply. Kasi hindi tayo nakakapag-import ng breeders coming from other countries na may bird flu rin. So, limited ang inyong choices. Alright, maraming salamat Doc OG. Sabay na rin natin dyan yung pagtaas syempre ng gasolina. <laughs> Transportation. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so maraming factors. Uh, yeah, so that's that's a very good suggestion. Maraming salamat Doc OG. We are now down with our last question and can we please flash it now on screen? And this is current from Miko Baltasar na napabasa ko kanina pa nagpo-post sa comment section natin. Doc, tanong ko po, ay kung tinamaan na ng bird flu, yung mga manok, eh may chance pa po bang gumaling ng 100% ang manok? Uy, this is a good question, Doc. Uh, I don't want to give you false hopes po. <laughs> Because once bird flu is in your farm, you'll be counting dead chickens tala. And even if you have chickens that survive, they will be shedding the virus na rin kasi. So yeah. they're not a good bird to maintain. So, yun nga, nababasa ko rin sa comments kanina dyan eh. Nagtatanong kung may gamot ba sa bird flu. Ang sinasabi ko lang po, right now, if they're telling of treatment sa bird flu, huwag kayong magpapabudol sa mga supply <laughs> na yan po. Honestly, uh, ako, I, that just this year, I had this case of um, online consultation na uh, bird flu case. We tried uh, antivirals, essential oils, uh, this, uh, hindi talaga nahabol. Ganun kalupit pag pumasok siya sa farm. Pero, biosecurity disinfection has been very effective naman in preventing sa pagpasok. So, sa audience natin ngayon, I would like to tell you all, focus on biosecurity. Nakita niyo naman kanina sa presentation ko, kahit bumili kayo ng kahit anong disinfectant, kaya niyang pumatay ng bird flu as long as tama yung timpla ng disinfectant niya eh. At tama yung gamit. So make sure, tapos mag-ingat, mag-ingat, mag-ingat lang po. Huwag burara sa farm, huwag magpapapasok ng kahit kanino. Tapos, yun nga, ang daming ahente ng manok ngayon or nagbebenta na mura, eh mag-ingat po tayo kasi baka yun ay galing sa infected farms yeah, yeah. nag-emergency sale lang. Kaya sinasabi ko nga, if bibili kayo ng mga manok, kunin nyo yung documents na bird flu free yung pinagbibilhan nyo kung gusto nyo mag-start sa farm nyo po. Tapos, always coordinate with your local governments para, uh, para alam nyo yung regulations kung pwedeng pumasok yung ibon na yun sa probinsya nyo or not. Yun po. Alright, maraming maraming salamat, Doc OG. Nako, ito. Now, finally, I understand. Ano, kasi I have a friend uh, from, from uh, Bukidnon who also operates a poultry there. I, I I remember the last time when we visited yung poultry nila. Talagang strictly kailangan bago pumasok yung sasakyan, kailangan siyang i-wash even yung tires. You mentioned it a while ago. And even us, kami yung mga guests, hindi kami pwedeng dumiretsyo pumunta kaagad dun sa bahay ng mga chicken. So, and yung mga manok nila. So, now I understand. Maraming maraming salamat, Doc Oji. Uh, I'm sure marami din, ta- marami, aside from me, no? Marami rin natutunan ang uh, ating mga viewers uh, from your presentation, of course, and yung ating Q&A. And uh, ayan, congratulations din, syempre, dun sa mga nag-submit ng kanilang mga winning questions. Again, but before we proceed to the next part, 
again, maraming maraming salamat, Doc Audrey. Thank you. Thank you, the Filipino vet. So, yun lang. Uh, kung may mga tanong pa, we have our Facebook page rin sa The Chicken Doc. Ayan. Thank you so much, Doc Oji Laranas, for joining us this evening. Thank you. And we hope to have you back again soon, sir. I believe magkakaroon tayo ng live event. Ito medyo face-to-face na. So sana makasama yung mga chicken doctors there. Sige. Tingnan natin dyan. <laughs> ayan. Doc Oji, thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ayan. So maraming maraming salamat again, Doc Oji. Ayan. And congratulations yung mga nagtanong, mga nagpost sa mga questions nila using, of course, yung ating official hashtag every time you post your questions ano uh, maraming maraming salamat for posting your questions yung mga hindi natin nasagot na questions don't worry we'll find ways kung paano natin masasagot yung mga questions na yan and congratulations na rin dun sa mga napili natin ng mga questions nako eto na our final segment sa ating audience nako e eh, ready na babuwa kayong lahat na malaman kung ano o kung sino-sino yung mga nanalo kung ready kayo gusto ko makakita ng mga heart emojis sa ating comment section. Sige nga, ready na ba kayo? Sige nga, i-post nyo nga dyan, mga heart-heart ngayon. Gusto ko makita yung mga heart-heart dyan sa ating comment section. Which reminds me, by the way, na medyo ko kanina about a friend uh, from, from Bukidnon. Hi, Kila Jo. And I hope you guys are watching this. Okay, so eto na. Marami na nag-click ng heart. So anyway, eto na. I guess we can already proceed with our final segment. Uh, as I said, para sa audience natin, uh, para malaman na kung sino nga ba ang mga nanalo sa ating uh, raffle. Ito, but before we announce, here's a quick recap of the contest mechanics. Ayan, ito na. Our final segment sa ating audience. Ready na ba kayong malaman kung sino-sino ang mga nanalo? Ito na. Uulitin na natin. Ilalabas na natin on screen yung mga names ng uh, mga nanalo. Now, to all those who won the raffle contest mamaya, ano, ibibigay natin yung mga proper instructions. So, ito na. Ayan, ipapakita na natin ang mga pangalan ng mga winners natin na nanalo ng gift pack or surprise gifts from the TFV. And of course, yung ating mga sponsors. Ito first to natin, Eugene Lim. Congratulations sa'yo. Kasama rin natin si Glajin or Glahini. Ayan, Glajin Dofelis. Ayan, congratulations. Our first two winners. Let's now flash the next winners. Kasama rin natin sa mga list ng winners, si Jack Hanson. At si Cram Perico. Ayan, congratulations. Four winners already ng special gift packs mula sa TFV at syempre sa ating mga sponsors. Sabay na rin natin ang ating pang-anim or pang-lima at pang-anim. Si Lily Desamparado at si Romar Zaraspe. Congratulations po sa inyo. Ayan, let's uh, please flash more names. Ayan, sabay na rin natin sila Julie Dumandan. At si Ronnie Fernandez. I believe we have, we're supposed to have 10 winners. No? So we're announcing our last two winners. And the last two winners are Jomar De La Cruz and Jumar Araño from Jomar to Jumar. Congratulations! Yan po ang mga pangalan na ating mga winners sa ating raffle na naganap. Ayan, maraming maraming salamat. And again, to all those who won our raffle, and of course, Q&A questions natin, or Q&A portion, Ayan, the Filipino vet team will uh, directly message you to get your delivery details. Again, to all those who participated, maraming maraming salamat to all of our winners and congratulations. Now, I hope you all enjoyed and learned a lot from our uh, guest speaker for today. Ano si Doc Oji. Maraming salamat again, Doc Oji. Now, we would like again to thank, of course, our sponsors. Ating event sponsor, we have APT Health, Wishum, Nutrition, and Beyond. At syempre, ang Zamira Life Sciences. Kasama rin natin, syempre, ang ating mga minor sponsors, Changlani Trading Corporation at BioVet 
Nutrilines Corporation. Maraming maraming salamat po sa ating mga sponsors on behalf of the Filipino Vet. Maraming maraming salamat everyone for attending. Nako, nag-enjoy po ba kayo? Kung nag-enjoy kayo, can I, can I see a thumbs up sa ating comment section? Thumbs up naman kayo dyan. Yan. Kung nag-enjoy po kayo, again, maraming maraming salamat. This event will be available online which you may share, of course, with those who miss the event. If you haven't followed TFV's official social media pages, follow na po ninyo ang ating uh, uh, Instagram and Facebook. Hanapin nyo lang po ang The Filipino Vet Philippines. Full word po yung Philippines. Okay? The Filipino Vet, that's one full word. Or lahat, one word yan. Dikit-dikit. The Filipino Vet Philippines on Instagram and Facebook to get updates on their latest and upcoming activities. Nako, speaking of activities, abangan natin ang mga susunod na episodes. And I understand, magkakaroon din tayo ng mga live, as in live na events. I know you are all excited to know when and where. So abangan po niyan by following yung ating Instagram and official Facebook page. A good night to all of you. Maraming maraming salamat. My name is John Santos. Thank you. And see you all again next time. Bye.